How are you? Well. You, know, you stay seated, that's okay. Oh, no, stand up, stay. That way the camera can catch your good looks. Um, to the important things first, um, do you often get mistaken for Guillaume Brahimi? <laughs> Uh, Are people hitting you up for a meal everywhere you go? No, not really, no. Is it, is it that bad? No, 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 it was more the face than the gut I was thinking of, actually, because I know how terribly disconcerting that can be. The number of people who've asked me for George Clooney's autograph, honestly. Um, Michael, a... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've given it a couple of times, yeah, the autograph. Um, Michael, a very impressive start for the, uh, the Wallabies this season. Congratulations. No, oh, sorry, the Waratahs. I... Uh, I saw you in the paper the other day hosing down hopes for the rest of the season. It must be lovely to be in a position to hose down the Waratahs' prospects for once. Yeah, well, uh, that's the coach's job normally is to make sure that um, the truth is never being told, you know what I mean? You always got to keep hiding the truth. But we've been we've had a good start, but it's only just the start, you know. have been working very hard over the last four or five months. Big game tomorrow night. So uh, if we muscle up there, we'll, we'll see how we go. Well, we'll get to that in just a second. Was it very sweet to, um, to really cream those Queenslanders? Uh, yeah, well, uh, as a proud New South Welshman, I suppose it's always nice to beat Queensland. For the Irish in the room that don't know, it's like uh, Leinster destroying Munster, uh, which I had the pleasure in partaking of many times, yes. So, uh, but um, it, was, uh, it was a nice day, but um, there's going to be another game with them up at Suncorp in uh, probably a few months' time, so there'll be a chance to square up again. OK, so to tomorrow, I mean, you said that last year's um, defeat to the Brumbies uh, towards the end there was, uh, was the lowest point possibly of the season, lowest point <laughs> possibly of your career. Um, what is going to make all the difference via the Brumbies this year? Obviously, when, when we played them last year, we were only new together. It was a whole new team starting off three rounds in. This year, we've got another 12 months' experience under our belt. And uh, I'd say we're a little angrier. So uh, bring it on. Sure. And uh, the Pocock effect, will that have any effect at all? What, the fact that he's not playing? Yeah. Oh, obviously, yeah, the best players aren't playing. It's an advantage too. But they've got plenty of good players. They've had some good form over the last couple of games. So. Uh, uh, I'd say that um, a lot of things will be seen tomorrow night. Indeed. All right, just quickly moving beyond our shores for a second. Last weekend, the, uh, the Irish great uh, Brian O'Driscoll achieved the remarkable feat of 140 test caps, uh, a world record previously held by George, previously held by George Gregan, the world record. Um, now, you coached Bod at Leinster for a few years. How do you describe him as a player and a captain? Well, he's uh, the ultimate professional. He's at the lead of his field, obviously one of the best rugby players that's ever played, I'd say. And um, I think that it's, a fitting, it's fitting that a player of his calibre holds the world record for test matches because he's probably one of the best players to ever play the game. He's uh, going to have his final, uh, final game in a, uh, an Irish strip this year during the, uh, well, during the Six Nations. So uh, what, how, do you, how do you anticipate that competition panning out? Well, tomorrow night, uh, I think it is the big game between themselves and France in Paris for the championship if they win. And I think that um, the Irish team under Joe Schmidt now with uh, O'Driscoll's last game, I think it's going to be too much for the French to bear, to be honest. So uh, hopefully they'll finish off with a big win and a championship for him to farewell with. Here, here. And, uh, and for you, best of luck for tomorrow night. Uh, thanks very much for being with us here today. Good on you, Michael. Cheers. I also have a treat. Um, for AFL fans. Now, not just any regular coach, not to say, Michael, that you're a regular coach in rugby, don't get me wrong, you're, you're quite irregular from what I've seen so far. Um, but one of the true greats of Australia's Indigenous Code, would you please welcome Mr Kevin Sheedy. Hey, How are you? I'm well, mate. How are you? I'm going well, particularly on... Uh, I have a, a brother, Patrick. Yes. And... Um, I have one of those sort of Irish families that uh, dad named every son after a Catholic college. So <laughs> St. Patrick, St. Kevin, St. Bernard's and St. John's. We had no chance. Yeah, sure. Did you get into any of them? Uh, no, yeah. I, but I looked at them, I drove past them, but never ever got there. <laughs> <laughs> they would have given you a pass. Hey, Kevin, uh, first of all, congratulations um, on your, on your semi-retirement. What's it like watching from the sidelines for the first time in so many years? Well, it was my 50th year last year, so I'm glad not to be on the training track. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. This is the first year I've had a break, and um, 
and believe it or not, I went over to England and uh, we had a conference, a sporting conference, first off. I slipped over to America in the snow yeah. and um, come back through Hawaii. So oh, no. it's the first time I've had a bit of a break. Yeah, beautiful. So they, uh, they must be enjoying having you around at home a bit more or maybe not. No, no, I think that uh, everybody sees that it's an opportunity now to get Kevin on somewhere and... Um, yeah. So it's sort of like a little bit of Kevin everywhere, and um, <laughs> but it's fun. It's fun, and uh, I get to see my own country, I get to see a bit of the world, and that's really good. It doesn't have quite the same ring as Eddie everywhere, but we'll, you know, we can workshop Kevin everywhere. If anyone's got any suggestions on that, let us know. Um, the Giants are making a lot of effort um, to forge strong relations with Sydney's Irish community. Yeah. Is, is that something driven by yourself, or is there so, some other reason for that? Now, uh, Paddy and I, we're, uh, we're, a bit of, we're a couple of old tigers, and um, we just want to make sure that uh, when the Irish people are here in Australia, that uh, they've got a club. Yep. And of 50,000, I spoke to Noel White and Katrina, uh, that uh, we should really get these Irish people on board, mm -hmm. uh, get to uh, know a little bit more about AFL, because uh, last time I was in Ireland, I got 84,000 at Croke Park, and yeah. I was a bit naughty, and we won, and <laughs> I... I I annoyed uh, Sean Boylan and all the boys over there, you know, they got a little bit upset. But um, anyway, the deal in the end is, we always have a bloody great time when we go to Ireland. Yeah, yeah, great. They're good, friendly people. Terrific. Now listen, tomorrow, you've got uh, the uh, GWS Giants v the Swans yeah. playing um, in the White Ribbon yeah, Cup. Over there, yeah, right, you've got Ty Keneally over there, Roy, got you. We're watching you, Keneally. <laughs> um, the White Ribbon Cup tomorrow. Um, you know, the, the, the Giants have put in a good show for the first few of these that we've seen. When are they going to be truly competitive against a great team like the Swans? I think that uh, next tomorrow's first quarter is going to be a very, very important quarter. I hope it's an all-out war. I don't like the sort of, you know, kiss and dance with your sister bloody games. Uh, let's attack them right from the start. I hope they have about three ambulances on side and uh, it's a shit fight for everyone to go and enjoy. Well, the, the way Ty's cutting through the beers today, the ambulances have rocked up already, actually. So, let's, no, that's not true. He's doing well. <laughs> and just very quickly before we go, I know it's not your team, but they are the other Sydney team. How will, um, how will Buddy Franklin fit in with the Swans? How, if at all, will he affect the Swans? Oh, I think he'll be a terrific player for the AFL in Sydney, particularly uh, for our code. Um, and I think that he'll be a marvellous player. They've got, you know, Tippett and, and uh, obviously him the last two years. So they've, got, they've built up their goal power. But, um, look, it doesn't really matter. We all know, in general, that a swan yeah. is a duck with a stretched neck. Never forget it. <laughs> well, I've got to say, I live down at Bondi. And uh, he's been strutting along the beach there with his shaven head, his long beard, his tattoos from neck to ankle, um, and no one's even noticed. <laughs> he's just like every other man walking along Bondi. So <laughs> um, he's fit in all right so far. Hey, Kevin, thank you so much for joining us today. Break a leg for the big game tomorrow. Good on you. Cheers.